Okay. So, um, even though the devil presented me, my name is Ron, for those of you who don't know. Um, I'm part of the technical steering committee of the Open API Initiative, which is a little bit much, but basically the Technical Steering Committee, also known as the TSC, is the technical group of people who end up uh, at least trying to decide what ends up getting into the spec uh, and what's not. It doesn't mean that we do all the work in terms of actually making the suggestions or um, you know, thinking about all the features, all the problems. We do depend on the community, and we'll talk about that. But uh, we're just... It's a team of people who make the final say, I, I guess. Um, something I always do when I start these kind of talks. Um, so, how many people are familiar with OpenAPI? Oh, that's great. That's way more than, like, a couple of years ago. That's not, wouldn't have been the case. How many of you actually read the spec? Okay, that's, that's more like it. That, that, that's actually perfect. Um, how many of you have used it? That's different. Okay. So, those are really nice numbers. The idea is that uh, the, the, the purpose of this talk is to explain to you how um, tricky and challenging uh, the process of creating an, a, a specification can be. And hopefully that will help you understand that, you know, how and why things can get slow or complicated and how you can help. And hopefully it will also help you when the time comes if you ever want to be involved in a process of writing any kind of specification. Okay. Um, so let's start with the first challenge when it came to the Open API. Um, so you do have to go back a little bit and tell just a little bit of history. So um, if you saw the title, it did mention Swagger. Uh, it's kind of still hard to talk about Open API without talking about Swagger. Um, so Swagger, um, um, any, anyone knows how many versions are of Swagger slash Open API? Four. Anyone else? No, okay. There are actually five versions, okay? Um, there, were, there was 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 2.0, and now 3.0, right? Uh, and hopefully, very soon, we'll have 3.1. Um, yeah, finger crossed. Uh, but that's a spoiler, right? Um, so, um, you know, we, we've had quite a few versions, but... Um, one, one tiny little fact that many people are actually not aware of is that 1.1 and 1.2, uh, sorry, 1.0 and 1.1 didn't actually exist. Um, what it means that um, Swagger itself started as a set of uh, open source tools to document APIs, right? Um, there were th three main core tools at the beginning. There was Swagger Core to generate API definitions from Java code. Uh, Swagger UI to take um, those files and render them into um, dynamic documentation, and so I code gen to generate code. Um, but the thing is that it was never written what was the structure of that file. So anyone who wanted to actually try and understand, uh, hey, if I want to write a, a new tool in PHP or Ruby or whatever, um, how do I do that? So they had to go and reverse engineer the code to figure out, to try and figure out what, uh, what was going on. Part of the challenge was that a lot of things were not well defined. <laughs> so, um, you know, we discovered issues and that's kind of like also how the project progressed over time. Um, and when I, I joined the project about six years ago uh, and pretty much my first task was to uh, reverse engineer everything uh, and everything that didn't make sense or, you know, sometimes there were conflicts between different projects. Um, so I had to nag Tony, who created the, the project, um, as to the actual meaning of what it's supposed to be. 
and I started and created the um, the specification itself, the spec file. So if, if you go into the Open API uh, repository, you will find version 1.2. Now, um, so that is pretty much the very first challenge. You, yeah, you, you probably want to document <laughs> the specification. Um, and obviously, if you start with something, you start with the documentation. Um, but yeah, that is the first challenge. Now, the, the interesting thing is that um, a lot of the decisions that um, I tried to solve um, back then in terms of how to document the spec uh, still exist today, uh, and they are part of the spec, and they ended up even affecting async API, for example. So the fact that it's actually uh, one document, not multiple documents, uh, the fact that it's, uh, it's described as different objects and hierarchy, right? That's all something that I had to you know, just deal with and come up with over time. And, um, I don't know if it was right or not, but you know, it is what it is, right? Uh, there was, I think there was, there were two versions. One of them had a specific, for example, if you look at the spec itself, um, there was a separate column that says whether the field was required or not, and then we ended up moving that into the description itself to save space. So there are some challenges, and, and you want to make it readable, obviously, because um, you do hope that people will read it, even though, let's face it, no one reads specs. Okay. Okay. Um, l l let's let's start talking about the different problems and challenges, right? So, details actually matter when you write a spec, right? Because um, the whole idea behind uh, creating a specification or a standard or whatever protocol, whatever you want to call it, right, is that you're trying to create a common language between um, you know humans, machines, whatever, right? Um, and you need to make sure that each person or yeah, each person can you know write their own thing, knowing that it will actually work together eventually. That's what we're trying to do. Um, so the details actually matter because if you end up with something like in the picture, right, that's just not going to work, <laughs> okay? Um, so w when we talk about details, right, uh, we, we can talk about a few things, right? We can talk about... Um, you know, when you read the specification, can different people understand different things, right? Uh, and that's a problem of clarity, right? Uh, and we haven't, we've encountered that in the past, we're still encountering it today, uh, and that normally goes into like patch versions, so we try to fix it and improve it, and hopefully we're not changing the actual meaning of what we intended to do in the first place. Um, the second thing about the details, right, is whether it's uh, complete, okay? So did we think about all the edge cases, right? Did we cover the use cases? Do, do we know what would possibly be the end result? Uh, and we've been hit by a few of those as well. Um, and uh, the last one is correctness, right? Um, did we describe it correctly? And, and, and we have seen and done things like that as well. <laughs> so we pretty much have a little bit of everything uh, in that sense. Uh, and fixing such issues um, costs, right? Uh, fixing, uh, making changes cl like clarifications, the first thing, that's easy. But when you start getting into completeness or correctness, those may actually end up being breaking changes uh, which are much harder to control. Uh, for those of you who do follow the spec, uh, I think a good example uh, as of uh, a recent example was the um, definition of how the keyword nullable uh, works, uh, and I, I saw that. I saw that. But, but, but it's true, right, that it was a problem. We didn't think about all the details in advance, and, but we ended up finding a very elegant solution, which I'm um, happy about. Okay, uh, the next thing about the spec uh, is um, the audience, right? So when you write a, a, a specification, um, you know, you, you need to think about who is actually going to read the specification, use the specification, who is going to be the target audience, right? And, you know, let, let's t take, for example, and it's a little bit, well, Yes, it's different, right? Let's take a, uh, HTML as a standard, right? Um, I remember like 20 years ago, um, I used to 
write HTML in a text editor, right? Or if I felt adventurous, I used uh, like a WYSIWYG editor. And then if you use a WYSIWYG editor and you switch to the text version of it, uh, you kind of end up getting scarred for life because it's horrendous, right? Um, so, so, but you know, it's like different ways to do the same thing. Um, and if you, talk, if, if you talk about like HTML and CSS, right, uh, the target audience isn't necessarily only developers, it's also um, designers, right? And, and uh, even today, it's even easier, like it's actual just users, regular users, not technical ones. Um, and when we talk about the open API, we actually have a wider range of different types of uh, users. So we have product managers and architects and technical writers and developers and QA and engineers and DevOps. And you know, it, it, it does go on, right? And, um, and every time we think of something that we want to add to the spec, right? Uh, we need to think, how is that going to affect, affect the audience? And Another part of that audience is also the tool vendors, right? Because we can easily input some, like put in something into the spec that would be very useful to, for the um, uh, users, right? But vendors will not be able to implement it very easily, um, and that that doesn't really help anyone. So it, it's always a matter of finding the right balance uh, in terms of what to put in. Community, so a big part, and it's not—it's not necessarily true for all standards or all protocols, right? Um, and and something to keep in mind, right? Even internally inside a company, right? You may end up having—you uh, may end up creating your own protocols or your own standards, right? It doesn't have to be something public. Um, but the thing is that um, for us, right? We actually see the open API is an open source project. Uh, even though there's no co uh, like code, right? Uh, it's still a, a, a living document. Um, and we really do depend on feedback that we get from, um, uh, from existing users, right? Uh, and this can be, you know, it can be through filing tickets, it can be by asking questions, uh, even writing blog posts, building tools. Um, or even directly submitting changes and, 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 and additions to the spec, right? That, that's fine. Like I said, we at the TSE, we're not just focused on doing everything on our own. We depend on community contributions. Um, and, and, you know, and one thing you need to realize about community is that uh, people come and go because people change their focus and all that. That's fine, right? People will do, contribute when they can. Um, yeah. <laughs> the last thing uh, that is important about uh, to talk about when it comes to the community is also to talk about the um, the community members who are not represented, and that's part of the the challenge. Because uh, when you have a, a, an active community, you will hear a lot of voices, which is great, right? But um, like we saw with the show of hands, and I don't know, like obviously the people in the front couldn't see how many people were in the back, right? But there was um, a, quite a big difference between the number of users, uh, of people here who read the spec and number of people who use the spec, right? Um, and just because you use the spec and you find something that annoys you, right, it doesn't mean that you're gonna speak up. Uh, I wish you did, but you know, it's, uh, it's understandable, right? Just like you use any other um, open source project. Um, so we kind of have to try and na always navigate and try to think about um, do we add this or do we not uh, based on a lot of factors, okay? <sighs> Validation, okay, so we get some awesome ideas uh, from the community, not us. Um, we're, we're at the team, we're not very, no. Uh, but we do get like a lot of feature uh, suggestions and things like that. And really some of them are like really exciting. Um, but some of them may also be a little bit too smart, right? Or too advanced or 
too big. So um, sometimes we need to go through some process of validating the need, right? Validating the uh, whether the idea actually works, and that does make the process um, challenging. <laughs> okay, it, it, it just takes longer, right? Uh, and it's up to us uh, to try and decide what actually requires first further validation and what's you know simple enough, makes sense. Let's just go with it. Simplicity. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, this goes back to, again, people wanting to add features, right? Makes perfect sense, right? We want to evolve, we want to be able to support more. Um, the problem with adding more things is that it means that um, it will take longer for people to learn the spec. It will, learn, it will take longer for people to use the spec and it will take longer for vendors to um, adopt new versions of the spec. Especially if we're talking, we're talking about maybe vendors who want to get into the field, and I'm actually all for having more competition. I think it drives us. Um, it, if the spec itself is very com complex, right, um, it's just gonna take them a really long time to go ahead and build um, a tool that's fully compliant, right? And compliance, is important because we talked about what I mentioned earlier. Um, you want to be able, we are writing a, a, um, a specification to create that common language, right? So if it's not fully implemented and you're not sure that it's going to work wherever you go, that's a problem, okay? Uh, and one, one potential uh, solution for this, for example, um, is creating, let's say, sub-specifications or sub-ideas, right? Uh, and it's something that we have considered. Uh, things like uh, we've had suggestions to support uh, SLA definitions, right, within the, the specification. Uh, I'm sure that we can definitely have a much more um, compre comprehensive security uh, description uh, set up in a separate document so that if you don't need that kind of level, then you don't need to worry about it, right? Uh, and then it's also easy for, easier for vendors to say, hey, yes, we support the core spec and this and that additional uh, specs. Okay. Um, oh, okay. I'm doing relatively well. I, I have like zero minutes, right? Oh, five? With the questions, yeah, okay, okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll run through this. So uh, basically, um, look, <laughs> everything I said right now, uh, uh, up until now, right, um, for us, like, as a TC members, um, ma managing the spec is pretty much like managing any other product. It's product management. So we need to, you know, we need to make sure that the right not the right, like all the voices are heard, you know, whether people speak up or not. We need to take into account everything that we talked about before, the audience, the, the, um, uh, the community, the, the way that things are uh, described. So th there are a lot of things in motion and, and sometimes yes, it's up to us to make a decision of saying, okay, we need to stop uh, discussing this and just take, make a decision even even though we know that it's not going to make everyone happy. So um, that's actually a, um, like a major issue that we have to deal with, and um, uh, it's, it's kind of stressful <laughs> at times, at times. Okay, um, really, uh, last, uh, last part. Um, so and it's just to give an example, or two quick examples of things that, I mean, Things happen, and I wanted to use a different word than things, but I decided to keep it. Okay, um, so I'll give you two quick examples of what we had with uh, version two of the spec, right? Um, so the first one was um, uh, in, in previous versions, 1.2 and earlier ones, uh, we had uh, a, a string called a base path, which described, um, you know, how to reach out to the, how to call the API, the base 
uh, URL for that. Uh, and then in 2.0, we decided to split it up into uh, three sections, which allowed uh, more flexibility. Uh, and that was like the host, the base path, and the schemes, right? Uh, now, the schemes was actually an array. So you could have said something like HTTP and HTTPS, right? But uh, we didn't take into account that, yes, you may be able to describe that, but you won't be able to describe that each one of them actually uses different ports. So it's not very useful. Um, you can use that. And someone actually brought it up uh, about five days after we published the spec. Okay, so that, that, that goes back into the whole community and validation thing, right? That, that's exactly where we need the involvement. Um, the other example, which is um, potentially a little bit more embarrassing, is in 2.0, we started using um, references, JSON references, more extensively uh, because we wanted to uh, improve uh, reusability in the spec. Uh, what we didn't really do, and I'm talking about, th this was a work, working group of about 400 people who were involved in version two, okay? Um, I think no one actually read the spec for JSON pointer, and they didn't understand the limitations that JSON pointer has, and that's one of our, the most common requests that we get today, so that if you put things alongside with the ref, right, um, it doesn't actually do anything. It's, it's all being ignored, and people, it took us a, a while to understand that. And again, that was after we actually published the spec. So, um, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so that, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, hope you got a little bit of understanding how complex and problematic the process can be. Uh, but it's also challenging in a good way. And we're looking forward to additional participation. No, I have a minute. Like, yeah, so if anyone has anything, and it's okay if not, I'm just saying. Yeah, thank you very much.